Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted to our show archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So this would be similar to your state library. So we provide services and resources and training and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows on Encompass Live for all types, uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, uh, I don't know, anything and everything. <laughs> really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. We have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of service and products, all sorts of things. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations for us, but we also bring in guest speakers as we have um, today. Uh, today with us is Justin, who's our world traveling librarian. <laughs> who's, um, whoop, you got your, you hit mute. Yeah, there you there are. we go. There I'm are. back. <laughs> Um, who has done lots and lots of things in his career um, um, and is going to tell us about how we can uh, use creativity to grow and develop ourselves. So um, Justin, I'll hand it over to you to give a full introduction to yourself and um, tell us all about uh, what you have for us today. Cool. Uh, Krista, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I was in Nebraska in 2018 and uh, what a cool state you have. Uh, <laughs> I want to put in a plug for Runza and um, all the cool librarians that are there in Nebraska. You welcomed me in 2018, and I'm so glad to be back. Um, Come and so, try hello. Runza. It's a wonderful, yummy experience. It's a Runza. Home, it's, home, it's one home of, fast food. It's interesting. It's, yeah, it's a little both, yeah. It's pretty good. Don't be scared of it being fast food. Just go yeah. with the Runza. Trust me. But uh, I... I'm coming to you from Maine today. I'm coming to you from my kids' room because they have computers and I don't. That's what happens when you have children. You give up things and that's okay. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about how to use your creativity to grow and develop. I'm gonna share my story because that's the story that I know. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping you can scrape some uh, ideas, inspiration, positivity, good vibes from this and apply that to your life and go ahead and move ahead in your community and uh, rock on. So before I start this, I just want to give um, a lot of love to Jane Dysart, who uh, oh, encouraged me to, um, she was the one, she said, Justin, get off your butt and start <laughs> presenting again. And she was the one who said, talk about your creativity. I really like that about you. And uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing this. So here I am. Hello, mm -hmm. Nebraska. Yeah. So before we start, my first slide. Oh, wait, where mm -hmm. am I? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Justin. I live in Maine with my partner Haley and our two kids, Finn and Arrow. I do not work in a library right now. I'm taking a break. Uh, I was seven. I was in a library for 17 years and uh, I hit a point and I just decided I need to stop. So I'm doing something else now and it's really cool and fun and um, I'm growing in many different ways. I have a dog named Darby. He's a Coton de Tulear dog and he's a um, adorable. He's uh, the the Coton de Tulear is from Madagascar. Oh, um, I have a I have a monthly it. column. Oh, uh, you have to check it out. Yeah, I have a monthly column called A Day in the Life in Information Today magazine. I talk to librarians from all over the world and about how they work, why they work, what they're doing, and all sorts of things. Krista, you're coming mm -hmm. up next in I think it next month's yet. issue. So uh, <laughs> Nebraska doing, and the world, stay tuned. What do I like to do? I like to listen to and make music all of the time. Uh, I want you to smile and laugh and learn as much as you can today while I'm here, because if we're not smiling, laughing and learning, we're probably doing something wrong. So let's have fun with this. And uh, what do I want you to take from this? I ask that sometime this week, you head out into your community and do one thing for some, someone else. Just do anything for someone else. That's what I want you to take from this and do. And if you wanna to talk to me, there's my email address. 
Uh, I really love emailing. That's Darby. Mm. I had to slow that in here. <laughs> it's a very fluffy dog, very cuddly. Mm, looks very sweet, so, very soft. Very, very soft dog. He would be here, but he'd be barking. So um, <laughs> I am a creative person. Uh, I knew from when I was a kid, I used to fill up drawing books full of uh, character design sketches for Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter II knockoff video games. And I knew I wanted to do something creative with my life. And then as uh, I became a teenager, I got really into music and I developed that other side of me creative, creatively, but I never chose a creative path in my career. I kind of just worked retail jobs until somebody, my mother-in-law gave me the nudge and said, go work with teenagers in a library. So that's what I did on the left side of these pictures. That's me hanging mm -hmm. out with teenagers in libraries. We did wonderful creative things. We built phone booths, uh, not phone booths, photo booths out of iPads. That's where that first photo was taken uh, with me mm -hmm. wearing the UPS thing. <laughs> uh, we played video games. We had video game tournaments. We built board games. We turned the library into, uh, you know, like Minecraft in real life. It was fun. It was creative. And then at some point I got to, I hit a wall and I said, I'm tired of being creative. I want to help others be creative. So I became Mr. Manager. And for about seven or eight years, I was a library director in uh, public libraries in America and New Zealand. I'm going to go to this next slide. I moved into leadership because um, in 2010, I always remembered this quote, Frances Hesselbane, that's how I'm gonna pronounce her name. Um, the leader's job is not to provide energy, but to release it from others. Uh, that was told mm -hmm. to me by a wonderful librarian named Peter Bromberg. Uh, and Peter, that yep. really, does everybody know Peter? Everybody knows I Peter do. Bromberg. He is a tr <laughs> truly wonderful Some human being, everybody. look him up. Yeah, you mentioned Jane Dysart, and I, I was thinking about, you know, th this is if people know the Computers and Libraries Conference and Internet Librarian, um, that's something that a lot of us have been to and I've been at and presented at um, many times over the years. Um, highly recommend, yeah. and yeah, you've been there as well. <laughs> highly recommend. Very great people, a great learning environment, and a great, like, fun community environment. Um, so this Francis quote, uh, Peter Bromberg told me this in 2010, and it stuck with me as a creative person because I had never had anybody in my life pushing me. And um, instead of saying, um, I, I didn't have anybody saying to me, yes, Justin, go do that creative, effort. go do that creativity, go be that person that you wanna be. So I stuck that in the back of my mind and I said, maybe someday I'm gonna come across somebody who uh, is a great manager and pushes me that way. I'm gonna talk about a great manager who did that for me very shortly. And then someday maybe I can be that person. Uh, I have to remember as a creative person that there are other creative people out there and that mm -hmm. I could be um, somebody for them to unlock their uh, true potential. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came up with this idea that I wanted to be the creative leader and um, moving ahead, how, could my goal to be to keep this library afloat, to keep it managing, to keep it moving ahead, but also be somebody who recognized what my staff needed and wanted to do and how to let them explore those options. So I came up with these bullet points that really guided me as a manager moving from a youth services role where I could be creative all the time to being a manager where it was a lot of budgets and boring stuff, but you also have that very important role of helping others. The first thing that I learned is let go. Is if you're moving into a, uh, a management role from being a creative role, it's great to just be aware of where you're at and what's gonna happen. Um, at first, I really resisted this change. I thought, uh, I can still do all these creative things. I can still run programs. I can still be that youth services librarian and also be a library director. You can't really do two things at once like that. Um, mm -hmm. If you just accept where you're at, you know, and say, okay, this is where I'm at, this is what I need to do. I'm gonna put the past behind me, but I'm gonna figure out ways to bring that past ahead uh, for people in the future. Just let things happen naturally. Uh, you retrain your brain. Um, when I was a youth services librarian, it was creativity all the time. You're surrounded by kids and teenagers, they're running around, um, you know, kids and teenagers, they just want to do things. They want to have an impact on the world. They want to make their mark, I guess. 
this is where, as a creative leader, you kind of have to retrain your brain to not always have that constant stimulus happening, to be able to gain patience, to be able to sit back, process things, and uh, think about, you know, yes, you want creativity to happen and let it flow naturally, but you also know that as the leader, you have to build in systems to help people achieve that. Uh, office work, that's uh, one of the things you're going to do a lot as a manager, even if you're creative. Uh, I found that my creativity flourished when I organized my space, I found a focus, and I got to work. I knew that there were things that needed to be done every day as a library director and as a manager. I got those things out of the way first, and then I was able to find my focus, and then I was able to dedicate the uh, second half of my day to helping people uh, with creative projects, doing creative projects of my own. I found that that organization really helped me. Um, uh, it, it actually gave me a lot more time to be creative and I was never able to lose that even as I was a manager. Hmm. Um, never lose sight. Um, Krista, if there are any questions, any comments, uh, you can always feel mm -hmm. free to chime in. I do not mind yeah. that at all. Yeah, yeah. I Anybody, if you ever think of anything you want to say or share a question or a comment or uh, sharing your experience or anything um, as a leader, uh, go ahead and type in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, everyone, and I'm monitoring that over here on my other monitor, and I will grab it. Yeah. Um, never lose sight. Uh, one of the things um, that hit, I hit a wall in 2017 where I lost sight of uh, who I was as a librarian, as a person, as a manager. Um, I stayed in my office too much, and I think that's a thing that hinders our creativity. We might think we're staying in our office, we are, um, we're really working on projects, we're really putting our head down, we're really getting to work, but creative people, even if we're uh, a little bit uh, shy and um, no, I think it happens with creative people. I think we tend to stand back a little bit, uh, not wanting to put our creativity out there. But I think it's important for us to always get out. As don't stay in our offices. Get out into the world. Remember that we all came from a place in libraries where we were. We all had front-facing customer service jobs at one point. Remember where you came from in libraries. Remember that you're always serving a community. You're always serving people. And the one thing that I'm always going to stress is changing kindness. Through this all, um, as a creative person, um, kindness is always going to be at the front of what you're doing. Um, going through big changes, if you're moving from a creative role into leadership, make sure you're kind to yourself. Make sure you're, as I said before, let go. You're entering a period of growth and change. Let it happen naturally. Be good to yourself. Make sure you take time out to take care of yourself. Let me see. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Communication. I want to talk about how important it is uh, as a creative person and as a uh, library manager, how important communication is. Um, I found this out the hard way. Some, as a creative person, sometimes I get really in my own head about my projects, about the ideas that I'm having that I kind of fail to let the world in until they're fully realized. Um, but one of the things that I've learned is every step along the way, no matter where you're working, keep people updated on where you're at, where you're headed, uh, why you're on this path. I think that when we all know what each other's doing and we talk to each other in a kind and honest way, we're able to put aside all of this drama, a lot of wondering about what's going to happen, where are things going to go um, if we just talk to each other. Um, right before uh, I signed on here, I, we my wife and I homeschool our kids and uh, we're having kind of a homeschool off day. It's vacation week here for the public schools. And my kids were having a little tip about video games. One was playing, one was not, they wanted to switch. And um, they just had to have one minute of communication, but instead they uh, stormed off in two separate areas. One kid's on the third floor, one kid's on the first floor. Uh, after this presentation, I'm gonna have to mop up the, uh, the damage. I, I think it'll be fine, but you know, um, it's just a real life example of I think communication every step of the way when you're diving into a creative project, when you're working in a library, keep people up to date on what you're doing, why you're doing it, and when you're going to get there. Um, it's also good to share your stories. We'll talk about that too later. Um, sharing your stories lets people know 
how excited you are to be doing the work that you're doing. Um, and when people are excited about the work you're doing, I think it's gonna have a bigger impact on the world. All right, um, as I said before, uh, communication. Uh, part of communication is connection. As a manager of a creative team, you need to connect with these people. You need to let them know that you uh, are there for them. You are going to support their ideas. You're gonna help them realize their ideas. So first, listen. Let your team generate ideas. Uh, my first library was in Titusville, Pennsylvania that I was a director of. And I remember I came into that library after, uh, I had worked for about four libraries before that, looking at it and going, I know this place. I've been in a library like this before. Here's what we need. And uh, I was very wrong. And it's okay to admit that you're wrong. Um, I did not know anything about that community because I wasn't there long enough. I should have let the team who had been living there all their lives generate the ideas. I learned my lesson the hard way. I gave them the keys to the car. And uh, for the next four years after that, it was pretty awesome because they were doing cool things. And I got to be a manager. And that was pretty neat too. Connect. You've got to connect with the people you work with. This connection will make the library go grow and connect, the, connect to the community more. Um, I don't like to use the term work family because that's kind of a weird thing. I don't know. I have a family. I'm cool with that one. I don't need a second one. But <laughs> work is kind of like a family at the same time. I just don't have the right word for it. So think about how you connect with your family. Think about how you communicate, even though I know it's hard sometimes, but it's necessary. Um, think about how you want to um how you have to have these connections in your life. And I think when you have at least understandings with each other and have good relationships, libraries can really take off. Once you have those connections with your staff, that's when magic starts to happen. That's when people start to get to the good work to connect with the community. Hang out, think about how much time you spend with your staff, enjoy that time. Uh, Sometimes that means uh, you buy way too many donuts and for like six months every day you buy donuts and uh, everybody gains a lot of weight and then, then everybody realizes you got to lose that weight so you work together to lose that weight. That was an actual real thing that happened and that's okay. <laughs> I and, feel um, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but those things are really great. Have coffee time with your staff. Uh, just hang out, have chit chats. As, as we, were, we were saying chit chats before this presentation started talk to people. I think um, as we spend more time with our staff, um, we start to understand who they are, we start to understand what drives them creativity, creatively, mm -hmm. and we start to let them do those things and give them more options to do those things. Listen part two. I just put that in there because I can't stress how important it is to listen to your team. Uh, trust me, from not listening to my team for six months, do listen to them. Mm -hmm. uh, encourage your team. There is never a bad time in the day to remind somebody that they are the brightest shining beacon of positivity in the world. Um, you know, we are connected in so many ways over the internet, over text, over phone calls and through video and all that. Uh, we've got all the time in the world just to let people know that they're doing a good job and that you believe in them and that uh, they'll get to where they need to be. Um, just keep on encouraging each other. Mm -hmm. um some uh some was yes. mentioning uh you said you know family is a some some people do call their work family work family but some people i'm sure would be like uncomfortable with that but some people suggested they call sometimes call their non-traditional family their tribe or their clan that other other words you can use if you want to give a little sense of community or connection yeah. connection yeah my work tribe i like that thank you <laughs> I guess I'm just, I, I, I don't have a work environment right now, so I don't think about that. I'm just constantly mm -hmm. surrounded by a 12 year old and a 15 year old <laughs> and a dog. So that's cool. Um, where was I, where was that second one? Oh, okay, I was gonna talk to people about, uh, where did I, ah, sorry about that. I haven't done no, this in a while. Encouraging right, people. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you see my um, cursor on here mm -hmm. on the screen? Yes, yep, I okay, can see that it. That person I'm circling is Corinne Hill. She was the library director of the Chattanooga Public Library. And in 2013, I believe, she brought all of these people to Chattanooga to um, be creative and weird and kind of give that library a nice little renaissance. 
And everything that I did in these ones, listen, connect, hang out, encourage them, that's what Corinne did. And um, I, I put this photo up because uh, I like to reminisce about that wonderful time with Corinne, Nate Hill, Allie Burns, and Meg Backus. Mm -hmm. And um, I think about the creativity in that library and uh, the culture of yes that Corinne put into that library. Um, we had a fourth floor to that library. And on that fourth floor, it was a 12,000 square foot space, I believe. And it was just kind of empty. And Corinne, let Nate and Meg have that whole floor to uh, build a, a very early maker space in libraries uh, with community space so they could you know, have presentations and workshops and events and all that. And um, we had these big empty walls and Meg had this great idea to paint this wall. Um, you would come out of the elevator of the stairs and you'd stare at this yellow wall and um, she painted it yellow and put up You're in the Right Place, which she made with the um, vinyl cutter in the, uh, the maker space. And that was, um, everybody came up to that floor and said, where am I? Am I on the fourth floor? You're in the right place. And that was just Meg's wonderful brilliance and creativity. She kind of just had that idea. And all that Corinne said was, go for it. Here's the money to get that yellow paint and you know how to run the uh, laser cutter or whatever it was, not laser cutter, final cutter. I know, yeah. Um, saying yes can lead to amazing things. And um, I don't know if that's still up there in Chattanooga, but when it was, um, it was one of those things I kept seeing people go up to the fourth floor just to take a picture of them in that space. And um, how easy it is to say yes and how life changing that yes can be. Just to let somebody know they're in the right place, there's this destination now. Um, so that's what a creative leader can do, just a small little thing. I like that, the culture of yes, more people need, that's a perfect phrase. <laughs> that yeah. More people need to embrace, I think. I mean, I think it's totally cool to go back and, you know, have some time to think about things and go, you know, you don't have to just go yes automatically, but um, always trying to find a way to say yes. I know in the library world, we talk a lot about how, um, Oh, we just don't have the budget or we just don't have the time or the resources. And um, I think that instead of saying that, we can always try to find a way to make something happen. Even if we have to scale back the idea, I think the idea of the culture of saying yes to an idea really shows a person like, go for it, just make it happen. It might not be exactly what's in your brain, but just try it and see what happens. Um, who knows what'll happen that way. Um, I believe in encouraging create, create, creativity every day. Um, as I said before, we homeschool our kids and that's kind of our platform for how to teach our kids. Um, you know, math is boring. Um, all those uh, <laughs> typical textbooks, that kind of stuff's kind of, it's, it's tough to learn that way. It was tough for mm -hmm. me at least. So we find creative ways to connect with our kids and hope that they learn that way and they do and it's great. And I think that that's by encouraging creativity every day, that's another way you can connect with your staff. Listen to their ideas that shape library services. Listen to the ideas the staff has. Find out how you can support them and trust them to happen. Um, my first library director was in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. Her name is Deb Puyon. Does anybody know? Are we? Do we have anybody from New Jersey here? Not a bad state. <laughs> not the not not the armpit of America like people say. No, there's some wonderful places there. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, she was the person who always had her office door open. She listened to our, our, our ideas. She said, that's a great idea. Let me figure out how I can support you. She would always support us. She would always find the money. She would always find the time. And then she trusted us. Um, she gave us uh, at that library, we wanted to have a beautiful gaming program. She gave us all the tools and um, resources that we need. She never came to an event and that's A-OK -okay because she trusted us as the video gaming nerds that we were. Um, to run the things. And I think that's mm -hmm. a really great thing for a leader to know. Um, just trust your staff to do the thing once you give them the resources. Always encourage your staff. Mm -hmm. Nudge them to think differently about, about both library surface, services and how things are done. Get them trying new things at their own pace. Um, we have to constantly move ahead in this uh, library world. Our, our world is changing so fast. Um, 
you know, uh, I went to computers and libraries last year around this time, and mm -hmm. the whole discussion was about AI. And um, I hadn't even thought about AI the year before. And I guarantee that whole conversation around AI right now is completely different than last year. Yeah. And uh, even scarier. I just saw this Reddit video, by the way, of how fast AI has advanced in a year. It was showing um, AI generated videos of Will Smith eating spaghetti from a year ago and today and like a year ago it was like you know he had 10 fingers per hand and it was like very scary but yeah. now it legit just looks like will smith eating um uh spaghetti uh crazy and okay scary this, too. Uh, yeah that's, that's very just scary, scary yeah. as the horrifying not nor not natural looking photos the fact that it is so accurate so accurate <sighs> so in, in this world where everything is changing so fast um we can't just rest on our laurels and libraries and say, we've got all these great things here. Why don't you come and visit our spaces? Constantly nudge your staff to think differently about how they can provide library services. What is an actual library services? What is an actual library service? And um, how can they get things done? Like, we don't have to do things the same way. Uh, we can reinvent how we do things. Um, so just always kind of encourage your staff to think differently about that. I always call that encouragement planting a garden. Uh, if you think about it, uh, like here in Maine right now, we're getting ready for spring. We're putting our little, we're doing winter sowing and we're saving in our house a bunch of uh, milk milk jugs. We're mm -hmm. putting the soil in them and the seeds and all that. Oh, yeah, so you yeah. find ways to encourage your creativity. Uh, pretend that you're planting a garden, sprinkle those seeds in the soil, which is your library, Water them, nurture them, see what they need. Every little seed and every little plant is differently. Um, think about how different plants are. I have this one plant in my garden here called borage. Does anybody know what borage is? Beautiful purple, beautiful purple thing. Bees love them. Uh -huh, you can okay. never get rid of borage. Like you'll just like, I've carried borage across the world almost. No, actually I didn't because New Zealand would have uh, killed me if I did that. I've carried it across all of uh, America, I should say that. Um, you can never get rid of borage. You can neglect borage. You can give it no water. You can give it no sun. Borage will grow, but then you have these other plants that if you don't water them every 15 minutes on a regular basis, they're going to die. Every staff member is going to be different, but tend to those people in those different ways. Tend to their garden. Let them grow. You'll be surprised what happens. Um, as a manager of creative people, um, you're gonna to wanna to always be a little bit of a part of everything. I, I know I said before, stand back, let your staff do the thing, but make sure that you do um, keep yourself in tune with the day-to-day -day happenings. Uh, for a while there, when I was in New Zealand, I really wasn't involved in any of the day-to-day -day happenings. And um, then COVID came and uh, it was, uh, I think the day before we closed the libraries for good, uh, we had tons of, people that called out and I had to go in and actually run the library, like the day-to-day -day stuff. And I mm -hmm. didn't know. And uh, that was a bad day. Um, so keep keep yourself connected to the day-to-day -day happenings, but at the same time, you know, let your staff run them, let your staff have that experience. But if you're a part of that still, um, you'll keep that fire lit for you. Also find time for yourself. Um, you're gonna be overwhelmed with a lot of work, but always remember your creative pursuits Make sure you take care of yourself and keep yourself creative. Libraries are not everything, and we're not just our work. Uh, I'm talking to you today as a person who does not work in a library anymore, and I think a lot of the reason that I don't work in a library is because I didn't take care of myself. I didn't allow myself to be creative for a while, mm -hmm. and I thought that libraries were everything. Um, and I think I burnt myself out. And um, I think having that balance, the yin and the yang, you know, there's a reason we've been talking about that for a very long time. Achieve that balance and you'll be good. And I think your staff will be Self-care is too. so important. Um, and especially in the world we live in today, not just dealing with libraries, but just in general, what's happening in all sorts of places in the world that you need to stay, take a step back from things and think about yourself. Absolutely. 100%. Um, yeah, I feel like when I come on here, uh, when I was preparing this to talk to you, I was like, man, I just feel like a self-help guru, like talking about like, be positive, be kind, take care of yourself, drink water. Um, and, I agree. Um, but yes. 
I think this is a really important thing to remember in the world today. Um, we're, we're, we're very creative people. Uh, humans are super creative. Look, we've lasted this long and uh, we've seen so many things and been through so many things. We're still here. We are creative people, but um, that creativity can be like snuffed out very quickly if we don't take care of ourselves and if we don't take care of each other. So I think that's a lot of the reason why I'm talking about that today. There's a kind of a, a mantra, mantra that goes in a lot of the discords that I'm in that is for various gaming and things um, that a lot of people always repeat and try to remind each other about. It's good to have other people that are reminding you about this, like this presentation. You know, don't you're not doing in this all you're by yourself on, on your own. Um, hydrate, touch grass, unshrimp. Have you ever heard that phrase, unshrimp? Um, I like that we one, all yeah. are creative people, and that's a lot of creative people who they're on their computers all hunched over all the time, or being artistic and drawing and whatever, you know, unshrimp, stretch your back, stand up, yeah. walk around, uh, touch grass, hydrate. Yes, take care of yeah. yourself. Yeah. I, I just read a really great um, piece in, I think, Mother Jones Magazine this morning. Yeah, it was Mother Jones magazine. It was sitting out on our dining room table like magic. I think a magical <laughs> little like being left it there. And uh, it was talking about these things that we carry around mm -hmm. our phones and um, how um, we think we're looking at them to broadcast out into the world. But all that we're doing is we're talking to this screen and um, we are broadcasting out to the world, but not a lot of people are listening because we're all just kind of talking to this thing. Um, I think it's really important in a world where this dominates um, that we kind of set it down sometimes and we uh, do remember to get out there and connect and we connect with others, with ourselves. Uh, and yeah, touch grass, stay hydrated, unshrimp. <laughs> okay, this is my whole thing on taking care of yourself. I added this uh, a few days ago when I was like, we need to talk about this more. Okay, first, when you get into a creative position in a library or a management position, ask yourself, what can I contribute creatively to my library? Take a look at the surroundings. What's going on? Um, you don't want to step on anybody's toes. You don't want to do something that somebody else is already doing. Um, you also want to see where there are gaps. Look into the community. Where can you find things that, what, what does the community need? Every community is going to be different. Some communities are just going to uh, have more resources and you don't have to do as many things. Um, there's one library where uh, I had to have summer lunches for kids. It was just, if we didn't have the summer lunches during this one month of summer, kids didn't have a place to eat for free. Um, I've worked in other communities where it was like, why would we ever do that? Because everybody was fine or fine. You know, everybody thought they were fine. I don't know if they were, but um, identify the gaps. Do what you your community needs. Um, when you do that, you're bound to reach someone. After you found what you can contribute creatively to your library, um, set goals and clear boundaries to allow yourself to flourish. Don't get too caught in the weeds. Um, don't uh, try to think about every little detail. Um, my children, I'm going to go back to them because those are my coworkers these days, I guess. Um, they're going on their first overnight adventure today to a friend's house and um, they were just getting completely overwhelmed thinking about every scenario and every single thing that they needed to take. You know, so we just took them aside and said, set these goals, set these boundaries. You're going to be there for exactly 23 hours. Uh, what do you need in 23 hours to allow yourself to flourish? Once we set those boundaries, they were able to pack a bag. They seem to be happy despite their fighting about the TV earlier. Oh, well, um, set aside time to allow yourself to be creative. Um, especially if you're in management, you're gonna notice your time being sucked away. Always find some time in your schedule, uh, even if it's 15 minutes an hour where you can do something creative. It can be whatever you want. Um, I used to just, when I was a library manager, uh, I used to open a Google Doc and just do uh, free writing, just whatever came to my mind. Um, I was a creative writing major, so I enjoyed that. And it never amounted to anything, but it kept my creative brain flowing. Make a space that allows you to turn your creativity on and off. Um, we have a third floor in my house and it, we gave it to our kids so that they could have a Lego lab. But uh, you know what, with dad being home all the time now, dad needs a space, dad doesn't have anything. So I carved out a little corner that is my creative nook where I can listen to and make music. And I've really enjoyed having that space. 
I can go there and I can do that thing. And then when I'm done, I can turn it off and leave. I find having all my tools, all my resources in one space allows me to turn my creativity on easier. It doesn't, I don't have to like charge up, I guess. Um, so if you have an office, use that as your space, find something. I bet your library has a little space where you can nip off and turn your creativity on and off. Don't give everything to your library. Allow yourself to pursue your creativity outside of work. Like I said before, I gave everything to a library for a while and um, I stopped really listening to music and making music, which is the thing that uh, makes Justin happy. And um, I struggled because of that. And uh, I've been mm -hmm. allowing myself more time to achieve that balance again. And I think I'm getting back there. And finally, show your coworkers how your creativity is having a positive impact on your community. We all have great stories to tell. I think it is very important um, for us to share our work, uh, to be out there, to be proud of what we're doing, to share the successes and failures. Um, on my website, which is justinthelibrarian.com, my biggest post, no matter what I've done in all of my career, is um, there's a post called, oops, I broke with the 3D printer. Um, <laughs> and it was about how um, uh, when I was in Chattanooga, they bought me a 3D printer and within like an hour I broke it. Like, <laughs> like to the point where like the plastic, instead of going down, it went back up and it encased the machine in it. Oh so, my. Um, but like, it was fine. Cause then I learned out how to like fix it. Um, that yeah. was the story, but um Share your stories, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, when we talk about these things, I think we grow from that. And I bet you all have amazing stories to tell. I still tell stories about my time in libraries to people, and you probably mm -hmm. have this. They always say, you should write a book. And um, <laughs> if anybody's ever said, you should write a book, you should probably start a blog or a something. I guess nobody Somewhere. blogs anymore. Share your stories, because I think, um, Man, they're so positive and they're so good. There's this one librarian out there. I keep following him on LinkedIn. I think his name is Michael. He's in California. Um, he's on TikTok, which I'm not on TikTok, but I watch him on TikTok. Um, he just did oh. share stories about how mm -hmm. positive libraries are. Like, yes, I follow him too. He's, he's famous now. He's been on Good Morning America. Oh. And I just saw he was at, he did an in-service day at, um, West Des Moines, Iowa Public Library. Beautiful. That's yeah. what, that's share your stories because mm -hmm. I see that person in my timeline and every day I smile. I'm like, wow, you know, like I hate TikTok. I don't even have it. And, uh, <laughs> but I, I go to TikTok to watch this person. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, believe in your stories and believe in the amazing work that you do and believe in your creativity and share that with the world uh, because I want to see it at least and I bet other people will as well. And it's interesting um, when other people may see these things too. Um, my husband, who is not a librarian, is not in the library world. Um, he's following Michael Librarian. He saw him. He, he has big TikTok user, and he must have just come up in his, um, you know, in his in his thing. And he said, "Oh, this librarian dude. Hey, do you know about him?" I'm like, "Yeah, I know about him." <laughs> um, so it will awesome. get out to people that are even not, you know, your library people, your staff, your your colleagues. Definitely. And he talks about a lot of things, you know, about self-care as well and mental health. Um, but he's just so yeah. positive about it as well. Yeah. And something I wanted to say, too, about in your previous slide about um, the, the the failure you had with the 3D printer. Um, this was a big thing. I remember quite a few years ago, uh, there were a lot of presentations at conferences about um, failure and that it's OK to fail. And it's a good thing mm -hmm. because you learn from it. And it's just because you, something didn't work doesn't mean it's a a bad thing. You just may need to rework it. Um, or just exactly. like you said, learn from it. It's it's okay and share those stories, the good and the bad, because um, other yeah. people can learn from it too and feel um, it's not just me. I'm not the only one that didn't know how to do this yeah. thing on the 3D printer or <laughs> or um, who exactly. had this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we the last library I worked at, I worked there for a year and I sucked at it. I was the worst. I was just a terrible <laughs> library director and. Um, I wasn't into it and uh, I had to step away and uh, I, I still, I, I'm not ready to be a library director right now, but like, I think I'm regaining it back. And um, I think knowing that I had to leave and uh, all that kind of, you know, 
you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life, which is my final slide. Um, yeah. uh, I I'm a child of the 80s, and I remember watching the facts of life and that's sticking with me. Um, it's a, is it a great show, Krista? I don't even remember. Uh, it's probably I, I not great it anymore. Too. Yeah, this is this is you know this is our Gen X. Yeah. Our, yeah. Our, this is our, our old life. people moment of this of the presentation. <laughs> I'm but, sure some of you watching are of our generation too. Um, the, thanks but, for um, joining us at the Gen X. It was X a show, but yeah. yes, it did have yeah that that theme song. It's true. It's a good yeah. It is what it is. I think, yeah. I think it's very important that uh, you remember that just you're gonna have good, you're gonna have bad, and that's life. As a creative person um, in working with creative people, uh, we are um, we're going to have ups and downs like you wouldn't believe. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're going to have great creative ideas, and then I've had great creative ideas, and five minutes after that, been down in the dumps. Um, it's just going to be that way. But when we look at the whole thing together, good and bad, um, we're going to get through this. We're going to um, get some good work done. Yeah. These are my. Uh, these are everything I think I talked about, all the creative projects that I've been a part of. Um, mm -hmm. You can check those out. And uh, I don't even know what time it is. I don't even know where we're at, but um, I, don't about anything else. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say, but I would love to just <laughs> hang out and talk. And yeah. um, um, we can leave these slides up, this slide up here with those um, links. Now, I will tell you too, while we're here, um, do not try and scribble down and write all these links. You don't have to do that um, if you're interested in them. Um, afterwards, when the recording goes up, I will have a link to Justin's slides. Um, this is Google Slides, right? Yes. Um, yes so you will you. have a link to all of these um, later um, with the archive, yeah. Cool. Um, along with the recording of today's show, yeah. Um, um, yeah, as, as I'm looking at this, I, I um, my links here, I can't believe how many of uh, my the creative projects that I'm, I've been involved in have all been a result of maker spaces. Uh, and I'm kind of really? going back yeah. to my like thought uh, in my earlier slide of um, just how important it is when we carve out these spaces mm -hmm. to allow creativity and thinking to happen, what can happen. And uh, I guess, wow, I'm just realizing there was Thanks, Maker Spaces. Yeah. Uh, you changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you? Um, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Ask. Go ahead. I was gonna say, are are, are Maker Spaces still often discussed in libraries? Um, I guess I'm a little bit out of the loop on that. Definitely, I would say okay. yes. Um, in in new and interesting ways, I would think, yeah. Um, cool. We actually hear, and so first I'll say, yeah, anybody have any uh, questions, comments, thoughts, type into the question section. Like we said, we still got about 15 minutes left in the show. We will chat and talk and answer and whatever um, you have to um, offer. Um, but yes, maker spaces are definitely still big in libraries. Um, here in Nebraska, we just last year, wrapped up a, a uh, like four or five year grant program that we oh, did cool. where we put maker spaces into libraries um, temporarily. Um, it was our um, where uh, we got a grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services for it, a couple million dollars, and we bought like a uh, set of makerspace equipment, uh, multiple sets. Mm -hmm. um, so like the big things, 3D printers, vinyl cutters, um, laser cutters, and then the little things too, a button maker, embroidery machine, um, was a robots um, of the, the the Lego Mind Spaces robots and a whole bunch of other things, cool. and we had four sets of these that we would temporarily put into a library for about 20 weeks for them to try them out, test them out, get a feel for it, um, and uh, get their community involved in it, and then move it to another library and then to another library, and we cool. went through about 35, 40 libraries in the state. Oh, that's beautiful. And um, it was huge, yeah. And now, as as a result of that, it was a, it was a it was kind of like you know, well, give them a taste, and then they wanted to buy it for themselves. It was the idea, you know, they can't afford yeah. to buy all these big, especially huge machines too. Um, and yeah, what if nobody can. What if it's not the right piece of equipment for their library? But we gave them a taste of all of them, and then they could figure out, oh, our people like they need an embroidery machine and they need a three D printer, but they don't need all the other stuff. And they learned that. Yeah. Um, and then they go on to buy their own of that or apply for grants. Um, we offer grants yeah. here through the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, I'm just wrapping up um, uh, 
awarding those right now are 2024 Beautiful. grants, um, library improvement grants, which is also funding from the Institute of Museum Library Services. And yes, people are still applying for, um, we're giving one library a new 3D printer, um, other awesome. sort of maker space equipment and cabinets to hold the stuff and all sorts of things. So I don't know about anywhere else, but yes, here in Nebraska, absolutely. Very cool, that's good to know. We encouraged it by offering these, I, I think by helping them test out all this equipment. That's that's super awesome. Uh, you you mentioned a button maker, and um, mm -hmm. I think one of the coolest, most low key creative tools we can put in a library is a button maker. Oh, yeah. um, when I was in Chattanooga, we were on the second floor. It was an entire floor for youth, and the first thing you saw was a table with old magazines and a few button makers on it. And mm -hmm. just the the creativity that I saw come out of that pile of old magazines and scraps of paper. Uh, wow, it, it like gave me like a lot of hope about <laughs> like the world. I was like, this is awesome. Everyone likes to make a button. Um, it's cheap. Everybody likes to make a button. You get the whole setup for, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars now, maybe 300. Yeah. And then you can put anything in there. We did it with paper. We did it with fabric, um, different nice. fabrics and um that you can uh, cut out pieces from and uh, button maker and laminator. We, we took two, um, our uh, state fair, the Nebraska State Fair, mm -hmm. for two or three years in a row, we um, they had a uh, one area for the kids where you'd walk through this this hallway and there was rooms outside, and we set up there to show off this because it was going to be coming to their library. So this is coming soon awesome. to your library, and we had a button maker and the laminator there, and oh my gosh, the line of kids and adults just wanting to make their own, you know, things. It just yeah, people beautiful and it. I, I think it really shows that how people want to be creative, and uh, mm -hmm. if you have the resources for them, um, and until they see it, they don't realize they it. They just like, do like, it. What is this? I can do. I said you can make a button, make it anything you want. Look at all the yeah. Oh. Um, for Christmas this year, um, we our our kids one got a guitar and uh, one got an iPad and an Apple Pen, and um, my wife Haley was just like, you know we're just going to leave the guitar out. We're just going to put it in the living room and it's just going to be played whenever. And mm -hmm. uh, you'll see, like, they'll just, they'll just touch it all the time and they won't be able to avoid it. Like they'll just, <laughs> she said, it'll be like two months and they'll be awesome. And like, uh, it's pretty cool to like watch my 12 year old, just like playing Nirvana songs right now. Uh, when, when you have like access to the tools and the resources, which, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, libraries are like, the place to do that um amazing things happen and uh geez yeah just imagine if we just had more stuff i, I keep thinking about how cool our communities could be mm -hmm. absolutely not that our communities um, aren't cool or anything someone wants some advice mm -hmm. on um and anyone else go ahead and type in too uh what advice do you have for encouraging team members to develop their own ideas and run with them Hmm. Okay. I mean, you're talking I think, about that something you should do, but how? I guess it's maybe more of the how. I'm trying to think back to experiences that I had. Mm -hmm. Wow. How? How? I'm okay. I'm thinking back to my time in New Zealand, where everybody seemed to. Uh, Everybody had a hand in running the story time events that were happening there. Um, every, everybody kind of had to do, you know, we had a roster and everybody kind of had to cycle through. And I just remember having a lot of conversations with the more, I don't want to say antisocial, shy staff members who didn't want to get out there and sing to the children and, you know, be out there with the parents. I just remember trying to relate to them and um, talk about how, I, you know, I think everybody has some kind of stage fright it, mm -hmm. relating to them on a personal level trying to tell them about um i talked about my first program that i ever ran which was a uh, open mic night which uh, one teenager attended and this teenager i was like oh sorry nobody came i guess we're not going to have the open mic night and she's like oh no i wrote this poem and i'm going to perform it for you and uh just like the guts it took to do that and um I think people just sometimes need somebody to listen to them and hear out their fears and hear out their worries 
and just be there to encourage them and go, you know, take it slow. Um, you'll get there. Uh, it might not be right now, but like, let's work together on this. I think amazing things can happen that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, telling them you, you can do this and it, you're not. Yeah. I remember when I yeah. first started teaching way back when um, I, before I worked here at the library commission, I worked at a university library back in New York. Um, and my first couple, you know, probably first six months or so of having to teach in front of students. Oh my God, my stomach doing flip flops. My, I had notes like crazy and it was just so, so nerve wracking. Um, but now, you know, I just do it off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, I don't remember where I heard this, but there was like that 10,000 hour idea where you just do things and do things over and you keep doing them. And once you hit 10,000 hours of doing that thing, you become an expert. But and, it takes uh, a long time, yeah. It's not it just takes a long time. And um, yeah, and uh, you know, giving opportunities to like um i remember there were definitely story times that were less well attended than the other story times in new zealand so we try to roster those people into the, like maybe the smaller story times the ones that you know got only six people instead of 60 people for some reason um to kind of you know uh, i guess to use like a baseball analogy they have the minor leagues and the major leagues not everybody starts off in the major leagues sometimes they got to work through the minor leagues to get to where they need to be mm -hmm. and um yeah, just giving people the time and the patience. Um, I think showing that to a person that you have the time and the patience for them to allow them to grow and to get to where they need to be. I think people really respond to that. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, and um, <clears throat> giving the space to do their own thing. Um, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I have, I've, I've been lucky with yeah, I've been lucky with almost almost all of my supervisors over my career that have been um, not micromanager type things. Um, enough to know what I'm doing, <laughs> um, but also enough to there's that balance uh, to let me do the thing um, and try it out. And like you said, the culture of yes, saying yeah, try it out. What could I mean? If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, and you go into something else. But there's no reason to say no. You don't. You shouldn't be doing that because you, you might not have the time for it. Or you know exactly. You know, we don't know what'll you know will come of it. Like, well, we know we won't unless we try. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's one thing that I'm I'm and I, I follow in my current director's um, footsteps. I'd say <laughs> I try to. He's uh -huh. really good at giving the encouragement and just saying, "Do your thing. Absolutely, I will support whatever." For it. Um, but then checking in on so how the thing do, how to go. I want and then and then. Um, Telling others about it, like um, following mm -hmm. you. Following, you're talking about ta telling your stories about what you do, but yeah. if your supervisor is also, you know, bragging about you, honestly, you know, you've got to follow through with that as well. That hey, yeah. they did a cool thing. Um, I wasn't involved in it, absolutely not, but they did, and I want you to go see that. So you know, um, they have to have the follow through too. I think of letting you do the thing, and then also promoting that you did the thing and telling everyone exactly. That. You mentioned um, micromanagers. <laughs> you mentioned micromanagers, and mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to add. I had a micromanager once, and I remember being so depressed. I was like, "This person just doesn't let me do anything, and my life is miserable." Mm -hmm. And my wife, who's just cuts to the chase, she was just like, "Quit whining, Justin. Like <laughs> this idiot's just like giving you a template for what not to do. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they're laying it out for you." don't do this. Like you never have to do that stuff again. Like you don't have to go through that experience. And I was like, wow, it's such a cool, positive way to look at that. You know, instead of being like, I have the worst manager in the world, you think like this person's terrible and now I don't have to be terrible. <laughs> you can learn from that too. Yep. I had one learned from that. like that and I'm like, that's yeah. always in my head. Never do anything. When you think of something, do the opposite of what that person did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's crazy um i think about that person more than some of my best managers um yeah and, that's uh, bad, hey, but... whatever it takes whatever it takes you know so it, um, you're you're and it, you know it's that cliche that the good and the bad you know the yeah, facts of life, the yeah good, it all the builds up life. who you are and what you, how you do things absolutely 
I would like to take back my one thing that I asked everybody to do, and it was okay. go be kind to somebody in the community. Actually, just go binge watch every season of Facts of Life. <laughs> Not joking. No, do the nice thing. <laughs> yeah. But yep. try look for them too, just to skip, to, you know, try it, try it out. It wasn't a horrible show, I don't think. Go to your library and see if they have it. Yeah, it's got to be somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Cool. All right, we're almost at the top of the hour again. Um, does anybody have any last minute desperate questions they want to ask of Justin or anything you want to share? We do have some thank yous coming out, coming through. Um, great inspiration. Yep, yep, that was the idea. <laughs> it was very nice to um, talk with you and uh, to yeah. be a part of Nebraska again. Thank you for coming, yeah. everybody. So glad to have you on. And, and uh, you know, good luck in um, whatever you are going to do next. Um, thank you. Whenever you do, if, if you end up back in libraries or doing something else. Um, I think I want to be a shelver again sometime. I think that's <laughs> really what I want to do. <laughs> I want to start there and not get to up here. I want to get to like there, the middle, sometime, and then I'll stop. Yeah, the, but, the getting burnt out on certain things. I know, like I said, before yeah. I came here, I was in a university and I did like you, mm -hmm. eventually, I was there for like nine years. I did get burnt out by it. I was like, I can't. Yeah, it happens. This particular thing anymore is just making me. And now I'm on the other side here at the library, yeah. State Library. I help librarians do their jobs. Yeah. And I'm so much happier. And you do here. an awesome job at it. I've been here for 20 years, and I I don't think I would ever go anywhere else or do something because this is my I found my happy place, um, for now. Cool. <laughs> By awesome. Me. Um. You're doing great work. Keep it up. Thank you. You too. <laughs> um, I will you. be keeping an eye on what you do next, and maybe we'll have you on in the future to talk about whatever your next um, adventure is. Sounds great. I'd love to chat. Remotely library connected. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to change my, I'm going to pull back presenter screen to cool. my monitor here. Do, 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 do. There we go. To wrap things up for today. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much, Justin. It's good to see you. Good Stay to see warm. you. Thank you. I, I love your I will. Yeah, I know you said it's Thank cold you. up there. In, it's in my the wife's, film. but I think it, <laughs> I think I'm rocking it. I like. You look it. so cozy. Yes, I love it. Um, and all right, so here is the session page for today's show. Um, if, as I said, today's show is recorded, and if you go to whatever is your search engine of choice and type in and Compass Live, the name of our show, um, you will find links to our main page and to our archive page. Uh, no one else is allowed to use the name. I don't have a trademark or anything, but <laughs> so far, we're the only thing that comes up. So um, if I go back to our main Encompass Live page, here's our upcoming shows. Um, but here's a link to our archives. I wanted to show you where you can access them. Um, and today's show will be at the top of this list. There is uh, last week's show. Um, should be up here and ready by the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and um, YouTube cooperate with me. <laughs> um, everyone who attended today's show and registered today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available. We also push it out on our mailing list here in the Library Commission, uh, through the Library Commission, and on our social media. We have a Facebook page, there it is, uh, for Encompass Live. If you'd like to use Facebook, give us a like. Um, here's a reminder to log into today's show. Um, we post, here's when we posted the recordings for the last week's show. We post that up there as well. Um, we also push out onto our Twitter account for the Library Commission um, and Instagram, which I've got to catch up on. Um, we use the hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation for our show um, name anywhere that we post as well. So you can um, look for that if you want to. Um, and while we're here on our archives, I will show you, you can search our show archives to see if we've done a topic, uh, a show on any topic. Um, type in anything you want on here. Um, you can do just all the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just very current. Um, and that is because this is our full show archives. And I'm not going to go all the way down because this is a huge page, as you can see. But this is the full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. Meaning this is our this is our sweet 16. This is the 16th year of Encompass Live. Oh. <laughs> which birthday. Is, yeah, thank you crazy but <laughs> been doing it i've been doing it 16 years um but um just pay attention to the original broadcast date they all have a date on there when they first were done and some of these shows will be fine um and great shows will stand the topics will stand the test of time maybe good resources but some things will become old and outdated um 
resources may have changed drastically or no longer exist anymore. Um, topics may need to be definitely updated. Like in 2017, talking about getting internet, probably want to have something more, more recent than that. Yeah. Um, but it's good to look at the old things too. Um, uh, some links will be broken. Uh, people may will work at a different library or a different place than where, when they promote uh, presented for it for us like 10 years ago. So just pay attention to that original broadcast date. But um, this is something that libraries do. We keep things for historical purposes and make them available. And as long as we have a place, place to host them, which right now is all on, um, these are all on the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, we'll always keep our show archives up there and available for you. Get back to the top. Ah, as you can see, it's huge. <laughs> All right, um, so that wraps it up for today's show. Um, next week, it is, as you can see here, we've got two pretty sweet techs. Pretty sweet tech, it's the um, last Wednesday of the month, the next week, which means it is pretty sweet tech day. Um, every last Wednesday of the month, Amanda Sweet, who's our technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission, she comes on and talks about something techie related. Um, we, have, we may have tech related shows throughout the month, but you can always depend on the last Wednesday of the month, it will be Amanda. Um, and next week she is bringing in Brian Pitchman from the Evolve Project. He's been on the show a few times before. Um, also another um, computers and libraries, internet librarian person. And he's gonna talk about his he's, Evolve Project. Project. <laughs> he's a nice dude. He is, he's awesome, yeah. Um, him and Amanda, do they do a lot of work together. So he's gonna talk. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I will be filling in more dates here. As you can see, I've just got one other date for March, um, but I am in working on some finalizing some more um, presenters. So do um, keep an eye on our schedule here. Um, one last thing I want to mention is our coming up this Friday, two days from now, is a big talk from small libraries. This is another online Thing that I do here. Um, annual conference, um, small libraries doing big things. It's always the last Friday in February. Um, we started this in 2012. Um, big talk from small libraries. All of our presenters are from libraries with an FTE or population served of 10,000 or less. Um, it is online. It is free. Um, anyone from anywhere is, is invited to attend to uh, watch. Um, we are um, is sponsored by us here at the Nebraska Library Commission and ARSL, the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. Um, the schedule is available so you can check and see who's present, um, what's, what topics we have on. Um, we are also very happy this year. We have the Page Public Library, the Best Small Library in America Award winner for 2023. Um, when the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic started, uh, the Library Journal, they uh, suspended doing this award, but they brought it back last year for the first time. And we do have um, the um, Page Public Library will be on at our 10 a.m. Central Time session talking about what they've been doing and how they um, won this wonderful award. We've got speaker information. You want to see who is um, presenting, um, and then you can register right over here on our registration page. So please do join us on Friday for a big talk. The entire, the almost the entire day will be recorded. There's one session at the very end of the day who's who will not be recorded, but all of the sessions will be recorded and available in our previous conferences link over here if you're unable to join us on Fridays. On Friday. <laughs> so, so that wraps it up for today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Justin. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. This was a lot of fun. I think hope we've got a lot of good, um, good vibes and good things we'll be doing now in our libraries um, using positivity your... always wins. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I try to be. All right. So hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye, -bye see you everyone. Soon. Yeah. Bye.